This is Introduction to Functional Analysis by Taylor. In this video, we're going to take a very quick look at this book. It's published by Wiley. This is a hardcover. Let's open it up. Uh, looks like it's signed by someone there. Um, 1029.73, uh, someone signed this book. Um, and then Introduction to Functional Analysis. Angus E. Taylor, Professor of Mathematics, University of California. Wow. And then here's the copyright, 1958, John Wiley and Sons. Super old to Gordon, Kenneth, and Kitty. This is the preface. Let's take a quick look, see what it says. This book has been written as part of my program of teaching at the graduate level. The primary aim of the book is to assist graduate students in learning fundamental ideas and theorems about linear spaces and linear operators, and to lead them to an appreciation of the unifying power of the abstract linear space point of view in surveying the problems of algebra, classical analysis, the theory of integration, and differential and integral equations. Cool. Let's take a look further in the book and look at the contents. So acknowledgements, and here are the contents of this book. So sets, the abstract approach to linear problems. And we have topologies, uh, topolo topological linear spaces, general theorems on linear operators, and then spectral analysis of linear operators. And then spectral analysis in Hilbert space, and then integration and linear functionals. And then we have a bibliography. Really, really cool, right? Really, really cool. So uh, it says, it is the purpose of this introduction to explain certain notations and terminologies used throughout the book. Sets, let X be a given set. If little x is an element of big X, this fact is expressed in symbols by writing. Yeah, just basic notation. X is an element of X. The negation of that is written this way. And uh, just all basic stuff. Talks about subsets and proper subsets. The empty set. Um, looks like just like a review. Uh, just a, a warm up, you know. It's like an introduction. Um, it moves quickly. You see here you have uh, infinite unions already. Uh, and just, you know, the previous page you were defining a set. So it's just giving you a quick overview of some things you're going to see. Um, yeah, these do come up, these types of unions here um, come up uh, quite often. And we have inequalities. So inequalities and this is the abstract approach to linear problems. Introductory statement it says. Let's let's see what this says. Let's take a just a little brief look here at this. The modern treatment of many topics in pure and applied mathematics is characterized by the effort which is made to strip away non-essential details and to show clearly the fundamental assumptions and the structure of the reasoning. This effort often leads to a certain degree of abstraction, the concrete nature of the originally contemplated problem being temporarily put aside and the aspects of the problem which are of greatest significance being cast into axiomatic form. Cool. And then here's a, a definition. Yeah, this is a, a book on functional analysis and I will I will uh, leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Taylor. He's got other books too. Um, this book does have, I thought this book had some answers in the back. Uh, yeah, this is not the book I used uh, when I took, when I took functional. Um, I was very fortunate when I took functional. Um, I took functional analysis after I had a lot of mathematics and so, um, but it, it was not a problem, you know, so it was, it was, it was good. It was a good class. It was a good experience. Um, I remember there was a question on a test, uh, when I was in functional that really, really got me. And it was, it was bad because 
it, it took me a minute. You know, I was in the graduate student lounge and the professor was there. And, uh, and I said, he asked him if he graded our test. And he said, yeah. He said, I got a 95. Oh, I said, oh, I, I missed a question. I was like, oh, what did I miss? And he laughed. He goes, oh, you missed the last one. And he started laughing. It was like the last one or something. I said, oh. I was like, it was so easy. All you had to do was add. I'm like, what? <laughs> And like, it was something so like, I was just like not understanding something. It was just like completely over my head. And because of that one little thing, you know, I lost five points, but nevertheless, I mean, I had gotten pretty much hundreds on the other tests. So it was, it was a good experience. Um, if you're good at writing proofs, so like in order to be good at functional, I think you just have to be really good at math. And that sounds kind of weird, but you, you just have to know a lot of math. You have to... I mean, you definitely want to have had like an analysis course, you know, um, some algebra, maybe, you know, some topology. You, you want to have a, a decent amount of mathematics before you uh, jump into jump into this. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not for uh, the faint of heart. Not at all. So, but yeah, my experience with this was, was very good. Oh, here's Zorn's lemma. Let's look at this really quick. I know I was going to end the video, but let me just, let's just look at this. Let P be a non-empty partially ordered set with the property that every completely ordered subset P has an upper bound in P. Then P contains at least one maximal element. Yeah. It's named after uh, a man named Max Zorn. I know a lot of stuff about Max Zorn. Um, I had a professor who passed away and he knew Max Zorn. He used to tell us stories uh, about Max Zorn. Uh, and I always thought that was really cool when he would tell us those stories. Um, and there's jokes too, but uh, I won't, I won't, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna go there in this video, um, <laughs> but my experience with functional was good. So if you wanna learn functional, I mean, you could get this book. I'd recommend getting every single book you can. Uh, that that's my advice. Um, when it comes to hard subjects like functional analysis, uh, people say, "Oh, one book is enough." Yeah, okay. Well, lots of things are enough, right? Like, you know, I, I can live in the woods and survive, but is that enough? No, right? I want to be warm, or you know, I want to be, you know, I want to have shelter. So, same thing with functional analysis, right? I mean, why just have one book? Having more than one resource is super beneficial especially when it comes to really hard subjects like this, because honestly, you'll pick up this book and you'll read it and you won't understand it. You'll be like, oh, this is terrible. But if you, if you really want to understand it, you have to understand it somehow. So you, you read as many resources as you can until you can actually understand it. And that's what, that's what makes the difference. But yeah, anyways, I hope it's been helpful. It's a pretty cool book. Take care.